Hello, welcome to another INFJ Ramble. Really quick, I was thinking about it. You know how for like most of our lives we felt like loners or we felt misunderstood or you know we've had like really high standards that just kind of seem like a barrier towards creating more worthwhile connections. I've come to the conclusion that we felt these things um, for the benefit of our highest self. And what do I mean by that? So when you spend a lot of time alone, you are gifted the opportunity to self-introspect. And when you self-introspect, you get to know yourself more intimately. You get to understand yourself, what compels you to do the things you do, what you feel is in alignment with your highest like good or for well-being. And you know, you can you can go into introspection mode. You can ruminate, you can like kind of see things more clearly because you don't dilute or distort yourself and you're not as fragmented. Sure, it's not fun if you're comparing yourself to how someone else is, you know, um, but yeah, I've come to the conclusion that being a loner has many gifts if you were to just kind of see it from that point of view. A lot of times we're comparing ourselves to others and our comparisons don't match up to what is socially normal or acceptable and so we feel like something's wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with you. I made so many videos about this um, previously. Um, the other um, thing about feeling like you don't quite fit in um, it's probably put in place so that you start questioning existence. You start questioning what this is all about, you know, cause if you don't, if you fit in, it's really easy to lose sight of what is real and what is essential. You know what I mean? But if you don't fit in, you start inquiring. You start thinking like, why? Why do, why do I feel like I don't fit in? And, you know, what what's that all about? Well, the thing is, like, you've gone from a really... Well, it's a progression, obviously, but you've gone from a very... very the <laughs> I can't talk. A very narrow-minded point of view, which is usually your ego to like a very expansive point of view. So of course you're not gonna feel like you fit in. Of course you're gonna feel a little detached from your identity that you've created or that others have created based on their expectations on how they want you to be or perform or function in this life. You know, so all of these things are actually blessings in disguise. So being a loner, feeling like you don't fit in, all of these things is actually pushing you towards a more universal consciousness. You know what I mean? I think in the initial stages, because of our lack of awareness and mindfulness even, like we fail to see that side of the point. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but once you start kind of like um, trying to push past any, um, points of views that are outdated, it's, it's uncomfortable and at times it's confusing and nothing makes sense. And I do feel like you have to feel feelings of despair and pain and, dark night of the soul in order to break through. You know what I mean? All of these things are just necessary pressures that 
will catapult you towards self-knowing. Isn't that the primary goal? I mean, people don't really tell you that um, because, you know, I think a lot of people haven't even come to that realization yet. Yeah, it's, you know, you, you read it in books, you know, know thyself, but to actually like know what that means and understand it and actively apply it are totally different like stages of progression. You know, I think some people read the words, some people try to interpret the words, some people try to decipher it, some people actually understand it without being proactive and then there's people who are actually understanding and proactively engaging in self-knowing self-realization you know what I mean and um yeah I I just feel like that's why I isolate myself a lot it's because I not only like to have the time and the the quiet because that's when you can hear the most things anyway, in the quiet. When you're constantly chattering or being chattered at, you know, it just kind of like muffles everything, you know. But when you're alone in quietness, in like your own space, I feel like you have opportunities to really hear things in the silence, you know. And people are so uncomfortable of silence but silence is so essential in order for you to see clearly so you know whenever you you think that being a loner or feeling misplaced is a a bad thing you know your soul knows what is best for you and whether you care to see or understand right now um you're still in the process of unfolding and it may not make sense now, but it will make sense later. And like I said, your soul knows what is best for it in order to allow itself to be. You know, the mind, we let our mind get in the way. You know, it's always trying to direct us and, you know, I don't know, like it's trying to direct you in a way based on previous impressions and expectations and conditioning and old programs, you know, but yeah, the mind is a type of intelligence, but there are many different types of intelligence. And I feel like the intelligence that supersedes, um, intellect is from a soul level. You know, your intuition and even beyond that, you know, if you, you align like your heart and your mind and they work together um, in an integral, integral way, then, you know, you no longer are fighting a battle with yourself. Instead, you are aligning yourself and then you're able to access even higher intelligence. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm so tired. I'm, I am overcome with sleep deprivation and I'm on the verge of passing out. But before I do so, I felt inclined to make a video. Anyhow, blessings to one and all. Amen.